Hello, everyone. I am Perry Nemroff, and I get the chance to hang out with the directors of Save Yourselves. Please welcome Alex H. Fisher and Eleanor Wilson to the conversation. Hi. How's Hi, Perry. It? How's it going? How are you guys doing? Not bad. We're Pretty doing good. okay. Yeah. yeah. So I had to start with a disaster film question for you because I am a huge fan of disaster films in general, but in particular ones that challenge you to consider what might I do in that situation? Would I survive? So are there any movies out there that actually accomplish that, that you guys were able to turn to and kind of, you know, use as a blueprint of sorts to create that feeling here? The disaster movie. I mean, I think really what we were trying to do was like the anti-disaster <laughs> movie in a way, you know, um, that like you said, like we're, the driving force behind like the idea of the story was like, what would we actually do if this happened? Um, you know, and a lot of like typically disaster movies that we love, you know, <laughs> uh, um, the, you know, the heroes ultimately end up like kind of figuring out what the the problem is and how to fix it and saving the world and yeah. we, we wanted to set up that a normal movie <laughs> the like the protagonist like figures out what's going on and like you know defeats the, the the alien or whatever it is but we didn't think that that was really realistic so it was just we just wanted to write a nice movie about two people who are just as inept as as any anybody yeah. we know would be yeah the plan was to sort of set it up from the beginning that this they're not going to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, yeah, there's no, there's no one's ever wondering like, oh, I wonder if they're going <laughs> to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's very clear. It yeah. does leave you thinking about it well after it ends. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, how you would so, do, yeah. Yeah, we had to, well, there's a lot of fires in California, obviously, and we, we've been thinking about that stuff more since we moved here two years mm. ago. Three years ago? Y yeah, three years ago, yeah. Earthquakes, and, uh, fires. Helen or bought earthquake kits and yeah <laughs> ran away from a fire once <laughs> yeah we actually do have a go bag now which we didn't prior to making the movie but it does make you think about like how prepared are you going back to your main characters here i know you wrote the role of sue for sunita but what influenced crafting the perfect partner for her and kind of <laughs> using what you started with and making them the perfect team for this we started with ourselves i guess you know in the first draft um a lot of the the little details of the character was just drawn from our real life because we're a couple. Some as of well. that stuff is still in this is in the script. Uh, yeah. We thought it would definitely be cut, but it stayed. It stayed somehow. So there is still like an element of Jack and of us about Jack and Sue, but um, really like um, we we liked just this idea of like Sue being this kind of very like type A controlling type person who's like normally very on top of everything, mm -hmm. and it's like what happens when a disaster happens and you really can't control anything in that scenario. And so it's sort of like her, her arc is about like having to kind of accept that she can't do anything about the situation. Um, and so to balance that out, like having a character like Jack, who's more of a dreamer and um, I just, just like more relaxed and idealistic, yeah. um, you know, kind of feels like everything will just work out fine. <laughs> um, was like a fun balance to that. And then when we when we um, learned who John Reynolds was from watching Search Party, we then started writing more toward him, even though he mm -hmm. was he was perfect. <laughs> we wrote the part, we couldn't think of anybody, and then we watched Search Party, and he was like, "Oh, there he is, Jack." Yeah. We thought he could do it, and then and then we started writing more for him. Mm -hmm. So now I actually have to ask, Eleanor, are you more the the type A approach to dealing <laughs> with a problem? And then uh, Alex, are you kind of the more free flowing, we'll figure it out as we go type? Yeah. You guessed it. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because Eleanor will usually like see a see a problem like way ahead of time and I'll be like, ah, don't worry about it. And then we'll get <laughs> we'll get like, you know, two weeks later we'll be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no it's I mean yeah there's there's parts of both of us in in both characters I think there was certain yeah things, it got all mixed up it did get mixed up in the end especially because like at times I, I feel like as a couple like our <laughs> our natural dynamic is kind of gendered unfortunately <laughs> it's kind of typical and you know at times we wanted to uh flip that for Jack and Sue so make them it's more... like we're too much of a cliche to yeah. actually be characters we tried to make them a little more dynamic than yeah. our actual relationship yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there 
this is obviously a comedy, but there's also some, you know, very real grounded qualities to it that tap into this absurd reality that we live in. So are there any films out there that kind of guided you to finding that pitch perfect balance? Have you ever seen that done before in a way that would suit Save Yourselves? Yeah, I mean, for us, like, it obviously, like, we always thought about the movie as being, you know, like this sort of fun rom-com that then gets hijacked by this sci-fi movie. Um, and so really for the rom-com side of things, we we looked to a lot of like, you know, rom-coms from our youth uh, that, mm -hmm. you know, we're sort of nostalgic for like When Harry Met Sally. Or pre our youth. Yeah, well, yeah, sorry, <laughs> even pre our youth, I guess. But um, yeah, yeah, those like real classic rom-coms, we, we love the way that they're shot and um, yeah, and they do sort of have this like very personal grounded quality to the comedy, which we really enjoy. Yeah, we wanted to uh, not give it like a super bright or like glossy look that a lot of comedies have. We wanted to go for a more classic like grounded look. So we watched some James Brooks movies and we watched When Harry Met Sally, which we had obviously seen a million times. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was sort of our look for the movie to just get people into this like comfortable sort of realistic, nice movie about a couple that you kind of would, wouldn't mind watching for a while. Right. And then we started to sort of mess with, with that aesthetic. With that, yeah, yeah, sure. But yeah, in the beginning, um, yeah, definitely like, like seeing, especially because John and Sunitha are like such wonderful um, physical actors. We knew that we, we really wanted to be able to like see them acting in the frame and really let things play out in wides, which is, I guess, like more of a traditional kind of uh, 70s, 80s rom-com type uh, thing, type yeah. look. Um, yeah. So, you know, like there's a scene where they're walking down the street in Brooklyn and, you know, that sort of like gives us like an establishing shot of the world, but it is the scene as well. It's, you know, it's like the whole scene is just this, this walk through the street at night. And yeah. um, it feels very like comfortable and, um, and really like sets you in a time and place quickly. Right, which you can, it's like straight out of like a like. I mean, it's very common, but it's like, instead of like tracking back with them on, on a steady cam or something, mm -hmm. we just put the camera on a long lens far away and followed them and, and it was just one take. And there's, you know, a shot like that from When Harry Met Sally, there's shots like that from other, from a lot of these older movies. And that was just the simple, the simple nice way that we wanted to, sh to introduce you to these people. Mm -hmm. Haven't your approach to directing the two of them, is it safe to assume you kind of took the James Brooks approach of, you know, kind of experimenting and letting them play around in the scene? Yeah, definitely when we got to Brooklyn, we were able to do more of that kind of stuff. There's, the film is quite plotty. So like, you know, there was like not too much room for improvisation once we kind of get into some of the plot stuff because there's like certain things that have to be hit. But um, we shot all the Brooklyn stuff last, which was really nice because, which was kind of by design because we thought, you know, the movie opens and you want them to like instantly feel like a couple. And we thought shooting that last, you know, we will have had this whole experience yeah. already together that they'll be like so kind of natural with each other. And I mean, they were like that from day one anyway, so it was yeah. easy, but, um, but yeah, I forgot what the question was. I think I just well, the, track. The other thing that, that he, uh, that James Brooks would do is like, well, he made movies that weren't necessarily like autobiographical as much as maybe this one is for us, but he would do like a ton of research and it was all about the specificity of like how somebody emotionally reacts to a certain thing or, or how the, how this type of person would, and, and like all the comedy comes from that too. So that was like easy to draw on for us, mm -hmm. especially for like the first 20 minutes of the movie. Um, but that kind of like, just like nailing, like, you know, the just like the way that Jack like wraps his bread and beeswax or like the way that they the way that they argue about their phones was like right. stuff it's that important. we can identify with yeah but yeah I think um in terms of like them improvising and sort of being loose with the script yeah we did uh, you know they are both like such wonderful like expressive um what's the word I'm looking for like uh cartoon characters no <laughs> <laughs> they uh, Okay, so, you know, John and Sunitha are both such, um, like, expressive and, like, great charismatic, charismatic and great <laughs> improvisational actors that, obviously, if you, you know, work with, choose to work with people like this, you want them to be able to bring what's special about themselves to the characters. So we would, you know, obviously, like, kind of do some takes that were sticking to the script a little more 
um, strictly and then like let them kind of be a bit yeah. more loose. And some of our favorite moments in the movie are, it's just like little, little details, little changes here and there, but when they made it their own, it was really special. Yeah, it's like they might be saying like 90% of the lines the same way, but they do it in a way that like is, is connected and real and like mm -hmm. feels very, it's like really fun for, it was, that was like the most magical part of the whole thing was watching them just to come alive. And we knew that we knew that the this we like we're happy with the script, but as soon as we cast them and we figured out Sunitha and John and they were gonna be this couple, it felt it felt right and it felt like it was gonna be possibly like a special movie, like a good is gonna come alive, like in the in the actual yeah. making of it. Which I guess is pretty normal for yeah, that's how it making goes. a movie. But yeah. I'd say your instincts were spot on there. <laughs> you you did bring up phones, and this is a movie that, again, it taps into a lot of modern things that we deal with today. But how do you go about keeping something like this kind of, I don't know, kind of timeless, in a sense? Because a lot of the movies that you've brought up, they, they do stand the test of time. And even though this focuses so much on our attachment to technology and how we use it right now, I, yeah. I don't know. I can't explain why, but I feel like in 20 years from now, I'll still be able to get something out of it. I hope so. We, um, we definitely made a choice to never actually show screens, um, even though it is like, you know, a lot about phones and our relationship with technology. We, we wanted to always like have the camera on the actor and not on like what's on the screen. So mm -hmm. they're always, you know, you sort of get a sense of what is being, information is being given to them, but, yeah. um, but you, you are just getting it through their own performance. We had like, we had certain things that we really wanted to, like timestamp the movie in like this like 2020 2019 whatever uh so so things like the music in the movie most of it's like from it like came out in 2019 mm -hmm. like it's these songs that just came out and we had a music supervisor that had to introduce us to a lot of musics for like not up to date we're not but as we, cool as we is. wanted to like just like get the time right but we also shot it with like a sort of more a more classic look didn't show phone screens really unless it was like just like a quick thing mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that that was our goal was to make it not feel like a because I do I also li like I like movies that are coming out now there's a lot of films and short films that are about technology and you see like the like there's like a graphic of the of the text and you can see in someone's it's funny to see someone like dead-eyed writing something with a lot of exclamation points like that's really funny <laughs> but we just like didn't that wasn't right for this one for this movie we just wanted to keep it keep it simple mm -hmm. I feel like you did that really well because it's only first uh, hitting me now that I actually didn't see a screen, but there's something about the way that phones are used throughout the entire thing that, I mean, it feels like second nature to me. So I, I kind of filled in all those blanks myself. Right, yeah, yeah. that's good. And it was, it was hard because like sometimes you want to just like see a text and there's no good way to explain it. But we, you know, we've, we just like made up ways where they would be reading them out loud to each other if right. that happened or, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I love disaster movies. I also love, love, love creature effects in general, but when it is something as deceptively adorable as the poofs, you can bet I'm going to harp on it in our chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the inspiration behind, one, making your villains, in a sense, cute, but also sticking to the practical route with actually creating them? Because that was another thing that really stands out and makes a big difference. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, we. Uh, it's funny. So we came up. We came up with the poofs, um, kind of with like some plot guidelines. Like we we needed them at first. We were just like, okay, we have this alien. We want it to be in this like hipster bespoke cabin and look like a piece of furniture. <laughs> so that was like the first rule. And the second rule was we were very adamant about the fact that it would an alien would not have a face. <laughs> because it it just it didn't seem logical to us that it would have a face it's it's very uh what is it um it's human centric human, yeah right yeah or whatever uh so, so those were the two main things and then and then obviously there's some you know there's we're in good company with a poofy like alien which is you know like tribbles or crit critters and mm -hmm. that was a fun that was a fun thing to do and then and then we always wanted it to be practical because we wanted it to fit into this like classic movie style that we had been going for. If we just put a CG poof into this look, then all of a sudden it's gonna like, it's gonna be like detached and you're not gonna think it's funny mm -hmm. or cute or real. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll never know. Maybe a CG poof would have been great, but <laughs> we, um, no, we re that was really like always the plan from the beginning. And um, 
we, you know, we wanted it to just like feel like Alex was saying, part of the aesthetic and part of the same world and, and really tangible in that manner. Um, so when we got into making them practically, that was like probably my favorite part actually yeah. of the whole process. We, um, we had this amazing creature guy, Calder Greenwood, um, who, who came on board and, and he just has like an encyclopedic knowledge of creature movies which was really awesome for us. And he has like an archive of them on VHS tape in his, right. in his stu museum studio. <laughs> right. So we went and, and watched uh, Aliens with him yeah. um, at his studio and he broke down this scene for us, um, you know, just kind of showing like step by step. I mean, it's like, you know, this, this part of it is like 12 frames or whatever, you know, it's like, but each, each move is like just a different thing that the, the creature is doing. So like one thing it's like rolling in, around yeah. on the ground, sort of like doing this paddle motion. One is like, it's just being thrown through the air. And then there's Once it's like, in reverse. Yeah. It's the, uh, the, the face hugger from when Ripley and the little girl are like fighting the face hugger in that right. scene that Sprinkler comes on. So, so that was like yeah. really great for us to like watch that with him and sort of see how effective um, doing things practically but with like sharp editing can kind of make something come to life like that and after we saw that we felt much more confident in being able to pull this off um, and and it was just like such a fun part of the process as well because everyone on set really got into it and and involved in it even like the actors where we were watching some behind the scenes footage the other day and there was like you know, Sunitha's like, oh, do we need to like, just check the poof? You know, like they're, they're all like, everyone became like very um, precious about the poofs when they're on set. And it was this very like um, special kind of like group thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, then when we got into the edit, you know, like it was just, it made things so much easier for the edit as well, because we could just look at what we were looking at and it was all there. And, and we did um, have a wonderful VFX supervisor who, um, did a lot of the stuff at the end of the movie yeah. that he kind of got into it as well and like we had him like subtly manipulate the poof in different ways so we, that we, we added that layer to it because you can and um, and that really kind of like just took it to the next level of like feeling like a little bit more alive and you know it, it was our fear that it would look like a puppet and I think that that sort of combination like allowed us to to still, it still felt like it was there in, in right. the room, but it was like a little bit stranger. Cause like critters and gremlins were like great references, but we didn't want it to be hokey or like fun in that kind of way. We just wanted it to seem realistic. So that's why aliens was like actually a better reference for us right. for like something that is like when you don't move it, it looks kind of, well that, that little face hugger looked it's pretty terrifying, yeah. but, but it's just like a dead thing. And then you make it come alive. So, uh, we wanted it to look real <laughs> and and scary at times. Yeah. I feel like that totally gives the poof an advantage over the face hugger. Even though I know you know both are super deadly, I I'm a sucker for pets. If I saw a poof on the street and didn't know what was going on in the world, yeah. I would 100 exactly. percent walk up to it and try to pet it. Yeah, totally. And, and that was we had a meeting with our our, our one of our producers Tatiana um, yeah. early on, and she was like. It's so funny that you wrote this um, like soft, cuddly alien that's going to kill people because it's kind of like a phone. It's kind of like this, like, like the comfort, the comfort of a phone, and you you don't realize that your life force is being sucked out of you. <laughs> You're just like having a nice time. And... Yeah, I would be very, very guilty of that. <laughs> How did you guys figure out how how violent, I guess, to make them? Because again, you've got a, like a very entertaining comedy here, but you also very much sell the fact that the poofs are extremely dangerous. Yeah, yeah it's a fine line. When the poof starts, when the alien starts showing up in the movie, we started sort of injecting these like more Spielbergian. People say that word. Yeah, sure, that's a word. Spielbergian. Yeah. I approve. Spielbergian yeah. <laughs> shots that don't that don't fit like the James Brooks shots, but they but they made sense for the time because we wanted to like get people thinking like about the mystery and like the curiosity that these characters are feeling. So we started like changing up the angles and doing stuff that was a little more dramatic or a little more uh, mysterious. Like, yeah, yeah, like like a like a classic Spielbergian film. Yeah, I guess it was just to um kind of like you know, there's like an, a number of ways that you're teasing the audience into like things are going to get start getting weird. And, you know, music is part of that, as you mentioned, and like, but also like we wanted to use the shoot style to to kind of like tease that as well. And so it's like things that, 
you know, you might not be thinking about it, but like, you know, when Jack and Sue like first discover that the bottles have holes in them and they sort of like peer in to look at them, that feels like, we always call that our Spielberg shot. It feels yeah. like very nostalgic to us. And hopefully like the audience sort of like picks up on that kind of like nostalgic, uh, you know, like sci-fi feel and yeah. starts to prepare themselves for what's to come. We, yeah, we sort of realized that it was really similar to the Raiders of the Lost Ark shot where he's <laughs> first going for the, what's the thing? It's like a, an idol, like a golden, and he has to switch it out really yeah. fast. But it's like, it's it's a really, it's really similar. We ripped off a lot of good stuff for this movie. Yeah. <laughs> you, you borrowed from that, you put your own spin on it. And, it all, <laughs> and, and really going back to the timeless nature of it, I feel like that's a big part of the reason why moviegoers of any age can find something to appreciate about this, whether it's just the relatability of what would you do in the situation, or if it's seeing some of their favorites have, you know, have its blood running through the veins of this movie. Yeah. It's a very powerful tool to use. For sure, I think it's why people love Stranger Things and stuff like that too, yeah. you know, because it's like, there's something in it that's like, oh, this is like my favorite movie. We 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 thought that this movie would be like, um, we thought when we wrote it, we were like, this is kind of a specific audience for this because they talk about internet tabs and it's like, it's like about millennials sort of, uh, obviously. But uh, when, we sh when we showed it at Sundance, there was uh, all the like all sorts of people liked it, and there was this one woman, it's like uh, a mother and son. And she was like in her sixties. He was like our age, and she was like, "You wrote. It felt like you wrote this movie for me, like about me, <laughs> about like, me." Cool. That's great that you felt that. <laughs> I guess everyone can identify with like being stuck on your phone and also being totally inept in the end of the world situation. Yeah, which is it was nice. Sad but true. <laughs> I wanted to know about you two working together as a directing duo, especially on your first feature. Is it a kind of situation where you two collaborate every single step of the process or do each of you kind of have your own specialties? We have very different um, personalities and skill sets, I think, but we do everything together. Yeah, <laughs> it is nice to have like another person just as invested in the process as you are, you know, in really like every step of it. And it, we also, I guess, do everything or check in with each other on everything just to make sure like sometimes you might be overreacting about something right. or underreacting about something. And it, you got to like, it's nice to check in with someone. And That's just mostly like, what it is. is is this the, we should we we should fight for this, right? Yeah. Or like, we can let that go, right? You know, yeah. and, and you know, a lot of that is just like, really nice to have like another person with you on that um but yeah we we pretty much were, we were in it every step of the way together and, and continue to be and um and that's how we personally like to work there was a couple times on set where we did like a slight divide and conquer approach just because of it's an indie movie and you've got to shoot this many pages and there's poops and there's babies and there's, uh, uh, you know, like special effects and all this stuff happening. And so there was a couple moments where it was like, okay, for just for today, like you just focus on camera and I'm just going to focus on actors and like, we'll just have to try and get this done. Um, that worked out that well. Was, that was good. Yeah. yeah. But like for out of necessity, that was like, that was good. A good thing to have two directors that day. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I have, uh, I've got two kind of fun questions for you. First, okay. poofs attack in five minutes. What's the first thing both of you do? Oh, oh. what we would do? Um, we were talking about this yesterday, actually. Like, we were yeah. like, do we have, do we actually own anything important <laughs> that we would take with us? And I, like, we couldn't think of one couldn't thing. Think of anything, Honestly, I was like, the plants? Very I, zen. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like, what do we have? Like, maybe the art of the walls but yeah yeah uh, what would what would we do i i mean i think it's like make sure that you just have like sh you know food food would, and shelter i think right? we'd leave la as fast as possible where would you go the poops east. are everywhere you go east to the desert the desert sure and you we'd probably raid um a grocery store in palm springs and then keep driving east okay just keep driving <laughs> Just keep moving, yeah. <laughs> also, we know a little bit more about the poofs than other people, right. so we would know what not to do. Right. At, Stay away from gas. Cars. <laughs> Stay away from gas, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'd have to yeah, we'd have to steal our friend's electric car. Right, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, they drink gasoline. 
Yeah. What about survival basics? Because the movie does tap into that too. I mean, is there any, you know, seemingly trivial thing that would really come in handy that you guys have just never learned? It's like, I think about if I had to pick up and hide somewhere, I, yeah. I don't think I could start a fire without, you know, matches, matches and the things that I'm used to. Right. We actually have like a lot of um, matches. You maybe don't know this, but littered around the apartment because I'm so scared of that. Um, you know, there's many matches in it, like in every drawer, in every room. Um, the the movie was really like a, like we really went into thinking about this type of thing and came out discovering that we knew a lot about what we would do badly. <laughs> and that's sort of all we've learned about ourselves is like how poorly we would act and like how poorly we would act in a situation like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, skills on, on like how to get food would be really useful. Yeah. I mean, frankly, like how to grow food. After making this movie, I bought a bunch of seeds. <laughs> I think that might come in handy one day, you know, to have seeds to be able to grow your own food. Yeah. Given all the plants, I bet you could pull it off too. I probably, yeah, I probably could. I probably could do that. That's my one special skill. Yeah. I don't have any. I don't have any skills. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Alex is good for. Uh, Which is a line from the movie. You know, um, moral moral support. Morale. Morale. That's the word. Yeah. Morale Very support. Important. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and chatting with me today. This I am not just saying this because I'm talking to you, you guys right now, but I love the movie. Oh, I love nice. shows in the conversation and the questions. But oh. everybody out there who has yet to see, save yourselves. You get to see it in theaters on October 2nd or on VOD on October 6th. So you are covered. Check it out.